talk about uh, a lot of the things that I learned specifically from doing Gadget, I wanted to talk about how uh, you often see two different ways that people talk about success and failure at startups. One is the post-mortem, the company failed, and you see the founder writes a post, here's all the things we screwed up. And uh, you know, you, they say you learn a lot from failure, and that's true. Uh, then you see a lot of these, um, there's another example, a lot of these, uh, you know, here's why these guys succeeded. And you talk about all the things they did that succeeded. What I wanted to do, uh, and I wrote a blog post about this after Gadget was acquired, is talk about the things that I wish I had done differently, even though things did work out, and that you can, even from success, you can still learn some lessons and think about the, uh, the things that, uh, you know, the, the bumps you had along the way that uh, you could have avoided if you had had sort of, you know, the, you know, the wisdom at the time. So uh, I have five lessons, I have about five minutes left, so I'll try to do one per minute. Uh, so one of them is be less secretive. One of the things that we did uh, when we were launching Gadget is we were obsessed with nobody knowing what we were doing. We were in stealth mode, which sounds really cool, right? And um, you know, when people ask you what you're doing, you say, I can't tell you in stealth mode. And then, <laughs> uh, which sounds totally badass, but uh, what happened was we weren't, uh, didn't really have the opportunity to get feedback on our idea early on. Um, it would have been really helpful for us as we were building the product and testing um, uh, what we were doing to actually have just regular people that knew about it and could tell us what they thought. And we deprived ourselves of that opportunity. And it's one of the things I really regret. We wanted to surprise everybody on day one with what we were doing. And the end result is it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, sorry, I went backwards. Um, so uh, that leads into no big launches. So we, again, we were obsessed with having a really big launch, making a big splash on launch day. We had the New York Times had an exclusive story on our launch, which was great, except that it drove a ton of traffic to the site, which then crashed the site. And uh, <laughs> um, you know, we thought that we were ready for a million people on day one, but we weren't. Uh, but also it meant that we had so much focus on what we were doing right away that we actually didn't have a chance to, again, to test our idea, see what people liked and didn't like, and then fix those mistakes. Obscurity is your friend when you're starting out because it lets you make those mistakes without too much of the spotlight being shown on you. And sometimes when you have a ton of attention on you, you become really afraid of making mistakes and then you actually aren't able to do the things that will end up leading to a better product down the line. So another one, be less agreeable. Now this is the one that only really applies if you have another co-founder. And so my co-founder, Ryan Block, and I, we'd worked together for a really long time. We knew how to work really well with each other. And that sounds like a great thing, right? Except the problem is, when we disagreed on something, we actually figured out how to compromise. And that sounds, uh, also sounds great, except what ends up happening is that we were meeting in the middle. So one of us would have a vision for the product, the other would have a vision for the product, and we ended up compromising and doing something that was in the middle that ended up being very mushy and very mediocre. Instead, one person's vision should have won out and we would have had a stronger product down the line even if one of us would have been unhappy. And in fact, when we started to, uh, as the company grew and we started to subdivide responsibilities and give one person more authority in this area and one person, the other person more authority in this area, that's actually when the company started to grow and the product started to improve because we stopped having to compromise on everything and we actually were able to have one really more focused vision winning out for what we were doing. Second is design matters. I think this is actually especially true in the world of mobile, but what we found is that design of the product uh, design of technology products is incredibly important. You have to really be able to have empathy and understanding of your user and what they're doing and what they need and what, how they're going to use the product. But you also have to create something that's very beautiful and very easy to use. And I think there's a lot of challenges there. We talk about how simple is hard. Uh, but one of the mistakes that we made very early on is that we outsourced design. We hired a shop to do our design. And it was only after we brought the design in-house and actually hired uh, a design and UX team to come, in, uh, come and work for us full time, that we were able to do the things with the product and make the improvements that really started to connect with users. So the last one is don't have to be perfect. And um, this is another mistake that we were guilty of, is that we became obsessed uh, early on with the product being so great that no, we thought we, we didn't want anyone to ever have any complaints about it. We wanted it to be something that we would have no regrets on putting out there. And it meant that we worked way too long 
on way too many things. It took us too long to get new versions of the site out, and we would have been much better off having put things out there, even if they weren't perfect, but at least to understand and get feedback from people as to what we could improve and then doing another version rather than working for a year or 15 months on something in secret, then putting it out there, discovering that there was some problem with it or something that what people wouldn't be receptive to, and then having to go back and spend another you know, several months working on it. And so I think letting go of that need to be perfect was really hard for me, uh, someone who, uh, you know, felt like uh, I didn't want to have things that weren't amazing out there with my name attached to them. But I've learned that over the years that people are very forgiving uh, as long as you're honest with, your, you know, as long as, you, as long as you're honest with them about what you're doing and also that they know that you've put a good effort into it. And so I now try to contextualize everything I do um, with Alpha as these are experiments. These are beta products. These are things which we're putting out there as tests or, uh, of a hypothesis or tests of whether this can find product market fit. And uh, the expectations, uh, you know, sort of become, uh, uh, you're able to manage expectations around the product. And you also say, we're looking for users to give us feedback and to tell us what they like and what they don't like.